Today on 10 Minute IT Gems, we have Scott Jarkoff, who is the Director of the Strategic Advisory Group for APJ at CrowdStrike. So welcome to the jam, Scott. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. No worries. So um, my first question for you is around the um, Light Basin State Actor. Um, so last month, CrowdStrike uncovered findings related to the State Actor, um, which is targeting the global telco sector. So can you give me a brief rundown on this, on this state actor and why is it so significant? Sure, sure. So, I mean, the, the basics behind this activity is Light Basin is what we call an activity cluster that's been targeting the telecommunications sector at basically the global scale since 2016. This is important because, I mean, just think about telecommunications. It's, you know, part of critical infrastructure, it's the backbone of the so-called, you know, information superhighway that we use every day, you know, especially nowadays in 2021, where we're, you know, all using our smartphones. And so we all recognize the importance of telecommunications. So this activity has been targeting telco since 2016, but in 2019, there's been a huge uptick in activity that occurred with about 13 different telecommunications companies very specifically being targeted by this activity cluster. So the adversary that's responsible for this activity cluster appears to have very extensive knowledge of the telecommunications industry. They, they understand the protocols that are in use on all those devices that are leveraged in telecommunications organizations. They understand how to emulate the protocols to facilitate like command and control. They are utilizing specific uh, tools to essentially conduct these attacks and to, at the end of the day, they're basically siphoning and ultimately, I guess, surveilling is a good word, the information that is traversing across these, these cell networks. And so if we kind of talk about how they conduct their attacks or what exactly is happening here, it really comes down to kind of like this four-phased approach that the, the attackers are undertaking, where it starts out with like initial access, and this is kind of like password spraying or SSH connections to these external DNS servers that are relied upon. And this is often done through other compromised telecommunications entities. So rather than like starting with the target and then attacking that target, they're using that target to then attack additional targets. So that's part of phase one. Then phase two is what we would call the foothold or established foothold phase. This is where they use a custom tool called Slapstick. This is an implant that's installed on Solaris or Linux servers and ultimately enables access and allows them to harvest additional legitimate credentials. Then phase three is fortifying access where they're using this, this another tool that's, uh, that's known to be used by Light Basin called ping pong which is like a icmp traffic signaling implant it's installed on those external dns servers that i talked about before and it provides like hard to detect reverse shell capabilities and like some redundant access to these these compromised external dns servers and then phase four is the ultimate goal here it's the collection of that that data that's riding on those telecommunications networks and ultimately what we're seeing here is you know kind of basically foreign intelligence service collection is what it appears to be you know being able to see what kind of activity and collect what kind of activity is taking place on these cell networks uh, collect the metadata the subscriber information etc and then you know this is potentially going to be used in in other areas you know by those adversaries but that's a, that's the you know the basics behind this light base and activity mm, right yeah um yeah, so recently CrowdStrike released its 2021 Overwatch threat hunting report. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that um, and how it uh, highlighted how cyber attack has exploited vulnerabilities amongst other things. Um, so yeah, in light of this report, how can organizations protect themselves as we move into 2022? Yeah, this is great, especially, you know, nowadays at the end of 2021, as we do move into 2022, you know, now more than ever, you cannot 
rely on technology alone. Like these adversaries are way too sophisticated. They really understand the limits of, of technology. And when I talk about technology, I'm not just talking about, you know, the latest, you know, Mac or Linux or Windows boxes. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, really the, the security technologies. And the attackers understand that. This is why attackers have moved... Uh, you know, to using what we would call like malware free or living off the land techniques, you know, using those native operating system tools. And that's why threat hunting really is so important is it allows us to see what's happening, you know, above the technology. You really need to have humans that sit on top of that technology in order to really be able to understand what kind of activity is taking place. Also, you can't rely on the legacy technology. You know, nowadays, uh, the, the adversaries just move way too fast. And so relying on legacy technology is just going to keep you in the slow lane when you really need to be in the fast lane. And then, you know, leveraging threat intelligence, which really kind of shines a light and helps you understand what's happening globally and understanding the adversaries and how they're conducting these attacks. That's really vital. And so that all plays a role in, you know, the, you know, what we see from an Overwatch perspective. And now, you know, kind of to the question, you know, how do you defend against this? Or, you know, what, what do you, how do you protect yourselves? I mean, uh, at the end of the day, we have large estates that we're working with in all these organizations, and you can't miss a single endpoint. That single endpoint that doesn't have coverage the attackers are going to find it. That's what's going to ultimately lead to that significant intrusion that could potentially lead to, you know, in a, a huge breach. So really, it's about protecting the entire estate, rolling it out across the, you know, rolling out the security tools across the entire, um, the the entire corporate environment, and then turning it on and making sure it's properly configured. I mean, I know it probably sounds funny to say. I mean, like you would expect that if you're if you're deploying tools, you would be properly configuring them. But oftentimes we run into situations where the proper you know level of of protection is not enabled. And then you also have to be vigilant and you know be paying attention to what is happening in your network. So adversaries are always finding new ways to to move around the network, always finding new ways to get into the network. And so there's defenders, the analysts that are watching these 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 attacks on a daily basis. You know, they, the the hunting needs to be uh, happening 24/7. It's something that that can't stop it has to happen because the attackers never take a day off right it there's always an attacker somewhere and so this is why you know things like our overwatch service or like even falcon complete is important because it provides that 24 7 coverage on these uh, on what the adversaries are are up to and then just kind of to add to to that in terms of protection but also to kind of talk about what we're seeing because this is important, you know, I'm, I'm talking about how to, you know, defend against these adversaries, but some of these adversaries are very sophisticated. So like across APJ, for example, we talk about the most prolific adversaries that we've seen uh, through the first half of the year, uh, Kryptonite Panda, Lotus Panda, Override Panda, and Wicked Panda. So these are uh, adversaries that have a nexus to the Chinese government, and then Wizard Spider, uh, arguably the most prolific e-crime adversary in history. In terms of targeted sectors, telco and technology, manufacturing, healthcare and government are the, the top five for the first half of the year. And then if we talk about kind of like breaking down the types of intrusions like nation state versus e-crime, it's basically 59 to 41% in favor of, uh, of e-crime. E-crime is up basically 400% since the beginning of 2019. It's just exploded. Specifically here in, in APJ, also, you know, from a who's attacking perspective, you have DPRK and, and China. They're, you know, right here in our back door, and they conduct attacks against the region on a recurring basis. We have Solar Spider, who is an e-crime adversary that's laser focused on hitting the financial services industry, very specifically in Southeast Asia, but even across the broader APJ region. And then we have Graceful Spider with the Clop ransomware, Doppel Spider with their new Grief ransomware, and then Sprite Spider with their Defray 777 ransomware. So those seem to be the, you know, the more prolific adversaries targeting the region. So I know that's a lot to take in, but uh, hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you mentioned your Falcon Overwatch. Um, 
products. So I want, yeah, I wanted to speak a little bit more on that. So CrowdStrike pioneered the concept of managed threat hunting and provides this through Falcon Overwatch. So yeah, can you give me a brief overview of what it does, why it's important, um, and yeah, how it combines human threat hunting and threat intelligence? Yeah, that's a great question. I think CrowdStrike was the, the company that basically pioneered this idea. I believe George Kurtz, our CEO, said this, that you no longer have a malware problem, you have an adversary problem, right? So we've kind of pioneered this idea that you can't focus just on the malware, like on a specific tool. You have to take a step back and have a broader view of what's happening when these attacks are being conducted and really understand that there's you know, groups that are responsible for conducting these attacks, excuse me, for conducting these attacks. And so we came up with this cryptonym system to shine a light on these adversary groups. And these names, you know, ultimately are designed to help us not only understand where the attacks are coming from and who's perpetrating them, but also to basically say that there's humans behind these attacks, right? It's not just these faceless folks that are, you know, wearing their hoodies who are, you know, hunched down over their keyboards conducting these attacks. These, these are actual humans doing this. And so with, with Overwatch, it really, you know, combines the power of human threat hunters that are looking through and sifting through over, uh, you know, one trillion events in unencrypted attack telemetry data on a daily basis to find those potential hands-on intrusions. And they are finding something on an average of one every eight minutes. And like I said, you know, behind every, uh, behind every attack is a human and the human analysis is key. And this kind of speaks to what I mentioned earlier around the technology. Uh, you can't rely solely on technology. You need humans. And just to give a brief example, if you have an attacker who's using native operating system tools as opposed to using custom implants to conduct their attacks, security software is generally going to have a bit of difficulty trying to discern the difference between valid use of, say, you know, remote desktop protocol versus, you know, illegitimate use of it. And so this is where the humans come into play because they can see all that in real time and kind of see it in context. And this is why Overwatch is important and how it helps to, you know, kind of identify this type of activity that's taking place. Brilliant. Yeah, lots of good info. Um, so I've got one last question for you, Scott. Um, if people are watching this and are interested in what you're talking about and CrowdStrike, um, how can they get in touch? Great question. So I think probably the, there's a few things that I'll mention. So first and foremost, I would say visit our website. There's a ton of information at you know www.crowdstrike.com. Check out the resources to learn you know more about security in general. There's quite a bit of of data sheets there. A lot of valid information on you know a lot of the different things that I've talked about today. Visit our blog. You know, our blog is updated on an almost daily basis with you know new and interesting and valuable tools. And there's ways to get in touch with, you know, with myself, with the broader CrowdStrike team through the website. But then also, you know, don't just rely on what you're seeing on our website. You know, also consider taking a look at some of the, the recent reporting from the major three analyst firms, such as IDC, Gartner, and Forrester, who have, you know, rated CrowdStrike, you know, in the leaders' quadrants, uh, essentially, of, of all of those of all of the reports that they put out. And, you know, so don't just take our word for it. You know, take independent... Uh, you know, take independent testing's word for it as well. Brilliant. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, that's all we have time for today. But thank you, Scott, for joining me. No, thank you very much. And I uh, appreciate you having me.